We're looking at a few showers moving toward Metro Detroit right now. We're holding off for the moment, but that drive home could be a little bit wet. We'll have more coming up first at four. Also coming up, a massage therapist testifies in the D. Warner murder case. Her story about a bruise she once noticed before the missing woman vanished and how the defense responded. Plus, here's Paula. Some people might call this torture. This is actually called work hardening. We're going to take you inside a physical therapy session that is a bust your butt physical therapy session that's giving superheroes back their capes. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. First at four, we are tracking the chances of showers and storms. You can see the radar on your screen and then a live look at downtown Detroit. You are probably going to want to have your umbrella with you if you are headed out tonight. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald alongside Ron Hilliard, who's keeping us up to date in the first forecast. All right, Ron, what can we expect for this evening? So, Christy, it's been a little bit sticky out there, warm as well. So you've noticed the humidity out there. We've had the showers earlier, more showers on the way here. So drive along 696 in Southfield. Now here's what we're looking forward to. Rain showers moving in our direction. As I track 40 radar showing that they're right now stretching from the thumb on the way through Saginaw to Shiawassee County and back over to our Lansing. This is very slowly moving to our area and we'll first to start to see these showers moving into Livingston and Genesee County is eventually getting into Metro Detroit in the late afternoon and early evening hours. Now this is what we have in store for us again very slowly moving across the area. These showers moving through and maybe a rumble of thunder through evening. Otherwise it's going to be mostly cloudy tonight and mild out there. So what do we have in store for the weekend? That is all coming up, but I want to give you a little idea of what we have in store for us. So showers this evening and then showers ending later on tonight. Tomorrow it's going to be warm with a mix of sun and clouds. More coming up, Christy. Sounds good, Ron. We'll see you in just a bit. In other news, a massage therapist takes the stand at a preliminary hearing for the husband of D. Warner. Dale Warner is accused of murder, even though his wife's body has never been found. Prosecutors called massage therapist Stacy Brody to the stand, trying to paint a picture of a troubled marriage between Dale and D. She vanished back in April of 2021. Brody spoke out about one appointment where she noticed Dee was bruised. She also faced follow-up questions from Dale Warner's attorney. Take a listen. At that point in time, I was working on her lower half of her body, and I saw the bruising, um, and I asked her, I said, girl, what, what the heck happened? And she kind of got quiet for a minute, and I was like, is it sore? And she said, well, she said, Dale and I got into a fight, and he pushed me into the dresser. You were never in a room to experience what Miss Warner claimed happened, correct? No. This preliminary hearing will determine if there is enough evidence to go to trial. We are sifting through more testimony and we'll have more highlights on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock for you. Well, now we have an update on new indictments related to a confrontation outside of a motel in Warren, which led to shots being fired. It happened back on March 29th off of 14 Mile and Van Dyke. Prosecutors say a fugitive apprehension team was trying to arrest Carl Travis on several outstanding warrants. Agents say he tried to get away in his car, dragging some officers and nearly running others over. Shots were fired. No one was hit. A federal grand jury has now indicted Travis with seven counts of aggravated assault on officers. Well, today we're hearing from the superintendent of Detroit's public schools as he sounds the alarm about marijuana incidents in the district. Nikolai Vitti has sent a letter to state officials asking for help. He says since the legalization of marijuana, his district has seen an alarming increase in drug related incidents. Vitti says the number was 289 between 2019 and 2022, and then it surged to more than 1,700 between 2021 and 2023. He says a week of school rarely passes without at least one student taken to the hospital after ingesting edible marijuana. With children as young as second and third grade, um, taking the edible and having extreme hallucinations um, and taking children to the hospital, um, you know, calming children down because uh, they're in a frenzy. And it's obviously uh, disrupting the day-to-day -day operations of schools, but more importantly, um, affecting the health of our children. We should point out in some of these cases that children accidentally took the edibles. More from our conversation with Dr. Vitti on Local 4 News at 5 tonight.
All right, Ypsilanti, get ready. We are live in your neighborhood tonight. We are going to focus on your stories and key issues. And of course, Karen Drew and Damon Fernandez join us live from Ipsy. All right, where are you guys hanging out? Oh, hey there, Chrissy. We are in Depot Town. This is one of the Ypsilanti's three historical commercial districts, and I have to say it's super cool. It's super cool, and it's super <laughs> nice outside really right now. Is. The rain's gone away. You know, the building we're in right now is the Thompson Block. It was built back in 1861 as a hotel and storefront. Then it became a Civil War barrack. You know, this area is called Depot Town because of its railroad connection. A train depot was built here, and the commercial area flourished over time. You can do a walking tour and see the historical markers all over over Depot Town. I really love this area because you can hit so many different spots and learn so much, including right outside the building yeah. and the Thompson and Company restaurant. Sean Lay met up with some people all over Ypsilanti, and he'll be showing us what they love about this community. And obviously, we're going to be talking a lot about the history here. We're also tackling some issues here in this city. Ypsilanti residents told us that what is on their mind is a 38-acre area of land. It borders downtown Ypsilanti. It's owned by the city, and it's been vacant for years. The property has had a lot of false starts. So we're going to take a closer look into why, and we're also going to say, huh, what could the future hold for this area? And here's Will Jones. Like so many communities, affordable housing is a major issue in Ypsilanti. It needs to be solved immediately because I don't want to move. The housing projects in the works to make sure this city is welcoming to people of all income levels. All right, we appreciate that. Well, he spent so much time in this community. He came out here a few weeks ago yeah. and actually just started asking folks, like, what's on your mind? What's it, what, what are the issues? And then we kind of spent a little bit more time diving deep into those. So those special reports are coming up when you join us as we broadcast live from Ypsilanti. So you definitely want to tune in. Yeah, plus we have some fun ways that you can help us decide where to go next in your neighborhood. You know, Christy, is all coming back at 530. So back to you. All right, love it. We'll see you soon, guys. Thanks so much. Well, we all know that firefighters face danger on the job and the risk of injuries. But today, we are taking you inside an aggressive and ambitious form of physical therapy designed to put first responders back on the front lines. Paula Tutman is at DMC's Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan. Take a look. So I think you could qualify me as a sissy because this is 165 pounds and this is a lot for me, but Alfonso's gonna make it look easy for me. Listen, this kind of physical therapy, it, it's not new, but it is worth talking about simply because of the way it's giving people back their lives. Cruel and unusual punishment, maybe. Uh, in the beginning, it was rough. It's like, didn't I tell you my shoulder hurt? <laughs> This is physical therapy, not just to heal an injury, but to return a firefighter back to duty. We'll have you do one side and then alternate to the other side into the tire. Alfonso May, a boyish looking 55 year old, has loved his work as a Detroit firefighter. And then February 1st. Instead of just falling, I reached out my left hand and popped something in my left shoulder. At that point, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, man, is this it? He thought it would be a career-ending injury. For 10 weeks, he's been in what's called work-hardening physical therapy at DMC's Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan. So you're going to do 10 jumping jacks, okay? You're going to do high knees, and then you're going to get into a low crawl position. First, his body had to be healed, and then hardened. I can't recreate the heat of a fire, but I can work you just as hard as you're going to work when you go into one. He didn't want to be sidelined. He chose trained, scientific, butt-kicking, hard work. They're wearing anywhere from 90 to 120 pounds of extra gear on their body when they go in. Um, with their turnout gear, their tank, all the, all the tools and equipment that they have, the hose that they're pulling. And so we need to make sure that their bodies can handle that after an injury. Last Thursday, just 10 weeks after what looked like the end. It's an emotional job, you know. Uh, What we do, we, we, we save individuals. We attempt to save individuals we don't know. A new beginning. Alonzo returned to work by literally jumping back into the fire. I had that after 12 midnight wake up call at 228 where we had a dwelling fire. I had the unfortunate situation of losing my mom during COVID. But I think in the back of my mind, I couldn't save her. But if I can save that one person, I'm doing my mother justice. Wow. 
Okay, let's face it. Alonzo, for a living, is a superhero. And basically what happened here just gave him back his cape, Christy. It's a wonderful story. Thanks so much, Paula.